Well, thank you very much for inviting me to speak today. My name is Andrew Sales. I'm an SPC team principal contributor at Scaled Agile. And I'd like to talk on the topic of measure and grow, which is about how can we take a data-driven approach to achieving business agility. Perhaps the best place to start is by considering what we mean by business agility. And the definition on this slide highlights the need to sense and respond in order to compete in a fast moving digital age. But we've also experienced recently with COVID-19 that threats can come from anywhere at any time. And indeed this recent scenario has highlighted and reminded us that the path towards business agility is never linear. The competencies that serve us well this year may not be the competencies we need to develop next year. What we need to be successful is to be in a constant state of reflection, always considering when we might need to make a pivot or when it might be the right time to stay the course. So how do we make the right decisions on this journey towards business agility? And the short answer is that organizations need to develop a data-driven culture, fact-based improvement rather than opinions and conjecture. Improvement results themselves are objectively measured. This helps the organization focus on the work to be done and less on assigning blame. And as the quote on this slide reminds us, cultural change of any kind starts at the top with leaders promoting this new way of working. Within SAFE, Measure and Grow brings together these two goals. It creates a data-driven approach in support of achieving business agility. Measure is the process of applying the SAFE assessments. Grow describes the actions that we take based on the insights from that data, which will ultimately help us achieve our goal of business agility. So let's start by looking at those assessments. And it starts with the business agility assessment. This assessment includes statements, which we'll have a look at shortly, that measure proficiency across all seven core competencies and the three dimensions within each core competency. It's used by the Lean Portfolio Management Teams, the LACE, key business stakeholders, to measure progress towards business agility within a safe portfolio. And what you're seeing on the right-hand side here is a completed assessment. The dimensions that have scored highest, five, and the dimensions that have scored lowest, one. And you can immediately see some interesting things. Lean Agile leadership in the bottom left-hand corner is scoring well in the leading the change dimension, which is great, but much slower in the other two dimensions, suggesting that leaders are not yet leading by example or not yet successfully demonstrating the mindset change that is required. And here are the statements from that business agility assessment, or at least some of them. These are the statements from the Agile Product Delivery Competency portion. Each statement specifies a desired state on the journey towards business agility. And they're measured by reflecting on the practices. Why do we measure practices? Because these are the observable activities that collectively give rise to the competencies required for achieving business agility. And the added benefit of this approach is that by purely assessing, organizations are getting themselves to think much more deeply about lean agile ways of working. Why is this a desired end state? Why is this practice important and what does it mean in our context? And is this practice part of our transformation plan? Now, following on from the business agility assessment, it can often be the case that a core competency requires further investigation before corrective action can be taken. And this is where the core competency assessments come in. There's one for each of the seven core competencies. The agile product delivery one is shown on the slide here. And in all other regards, the ways the statements are formed, the means to measure, exactly the same as the business agility assessment. But the detail is greatly amplified. 50 statements for APD, as an example, compared to just nine statements for APD on the business agility assessment. And we're going to have a look at some use cases for these core competency assessments shortly. And then where do we go next? Once we've got the data, we need to close the loop. So the final step is to identify grows. Grows is the shorthand we use to describe the activities that are going to increase proficiency in a particular core competency dimension. And there's two sources for them. There'll be those that the organization themselves determine based on their deep domain knowledge from the low scoring statements. There's also a set of curated grows you can see on the right hand side here that we've put together recommended activities that we've seen work well. Once you determine the grows that you want to take forward, we turn them into backlog items, stories or features. We prioritize them and we focus on delivering the highest, most important work first. So that's a bit of background, but what I really want to focus on today is opportunities for applying measure and grow. And I've used the implementation roadmap as a backdrop 
I'm just going to share some examples. It's not meant to be a definitive list by any means. And the first use for assessments of this kind is to create a business agility baseline using the business agility assessment. I've specifically put this after the change agents, executives, managers, and leaders have been trained, because as we know, some knowledge of safe and lean agile terminology is required to be able to assess effectively. And what are the benefits of this? The most immediate and powerful benefit is it helps to build the urgency for change. Seeing the results from the assessment help to drive the need to change and start on this journey towards business agility. It also helps to identify possible short-term wins. Are there some immediate corrective actions we can take to deliver some immediate improvements? And then of course, by measuring across the entire portfolio, it can help us to decide where we're gonna start on this journey. Which art has the greatest urgency? Which art is struggling, or which area rather is struggling at the moment and would be the best candidate for a first art? And then of course, once we have the baseline in place, we can use this as a way of reflecting and demonstrating the improvements that we're making further down the line. Now the second example opportunity is using assessments to build out incrementally the implementation plan. And this again is critical. Knowing that organizations are starting from different points, they're of different sizes, they're operating in different markets, they're gonna to need to adapt the implementation plan to suit their needs. The assessments are gonna help us to focus on the greatest need. They're also gonna allow us, if we run them every PI, to develop and build out the roadmap incrementally. Many organizations see great benefit in creating a three PI rolling implementation roadmap. The assessments can help us to extend this. And then importantly, they're going to help us to validate the right pace of change. Are the results from the assessment showing that the practices we're putting in place are becoming self-sustaining? Or are we actually falling back into our old ways of working? If we are, maybe we need to slow down, reinforce some of these new ways. If things are going well, perhaps we can accelerate the change. And then finally, if we're using the online versions of these assessments, it gives us the opportunity to compare against industry benchmarks. Are we focusing on the right things in comparisons to our competitors? The third scenario is about how we can start to use these assessments as tools for the teams and arts on their continuous improvement journeys. And the important step here is that we're decentralizing the access to these assessments. Perhaps the teams are using the team and technical agility, the TTA assessment, to create inputs to their retrospective. Perhaps the Agile release train is using the results of the APD, the Agile product delivery assessment, to feed in and focus their upcoming INA. But either way, they're using the results and the data that they glean to help them understand the improvement items at their level of the organization. So what is it that the team want to take into their backlog? What is it the art wants to take forward as part of their improvement roadmap. And then finally, the fourth scenario that I'm highlighting is how we can use the assessment to accelerate towards business agility. By the time we get to the final step of the implementation roadmap, we're really in a continuous improvement mode. And here we're probably running the assessments on a regular cadence, once a quarter, a couple of times a year. And what we're doing is using the results from them and the the continued demonstra demonstration of progress to support the continued strategy for improvement, helping to support the continued investment. We're also starting to share the successes wider across the organization and helping to extend agility outside of the technology domain and starting to roll out organizational agility. It provides a great way and a great opportunity to share the learnings wider across the organization. So now I've covered those examples and those opportunities, let me just conclude by talking a bit about where you can get access and further information about the assessments and Measure and Grow. The spreadsheet versions of the assessments are available to everyone from the Measure and Grow article on the Scaled Agile Framework. That'll give you everything you need to get started with the assessments. And then for safe community members, you can come to your community um, portal and access the assessments through our online providers, Agility Health and Comparative Agility, you can also get access to the Measure and Grow Toolkit that will give you everything you need to get started running assessment workshops. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. I hope there was some useful content there. Please, if you'd like to continue the conversation, reach out to me on LinkedIn, and I'd be more than happy to continue to discuss how you can take a data-driven approach to achieving business agility. Thank you very much.